Did you remember to plug in John's tablet last night after he went to sleep? I thought you plugged it in. You were the last one up. Whoa, whoa. I only got up to get a drink. I never even checked. Morning. Where's my tablet? Oh, oh crap. crap. What's up, Circle? So a couple weeks ago, I was nearly fired from my job. Yep, true story. The person directly above me recently quit and a new boss is filling in. He came in a couple weeks ago to do what he said was a routine audit. At the end of the audit, he called me into my office, my own office by the way, and showed me that we were missing a lot of money. I was floored! I'd never had money missing in my entire career. He showed me exactly what we were missing, which days it happened. I mean, the proof was right there. I knew that this was the type of thing that caused people to lose their jobs, but I couldn't dispute what he was showing me. Later in the day after he left, I decided to dig into this issue myself. I mean, I knew there was no way we could be missing money. Within an hour of digging, I began to figure out what was wrong. There had been new hardware and software added to our system a few weeks prior, and it was reporting money to the wrong line on a report that the home office utilizes. Phew, that was scary. I emailed him later in the day to let him know what I'd found and explained that I was still looking into it, but wanted him to be aware. And his response? If your theory is true, you'll need to provide evidence. But in my experience, that's never the case. What? Now everything was really coming into focus. He hadn't come in to do a routine audit. He'd come in looking specifically for missing money. My guilt had already been assumed, and because he didn't do his job thoroughly enough, he had what he felt was all the proof he needed. I'm a fairly thorough person, and this is my job on the line, so I gathered all of the documentation, presented it perfectly by matching up every number down to the penny, and felt good because I'd proven we were not short. But guess what? I then was drilled with questions. Please provide this report. Provide documentation for these days. Call the software company and request this information. I was still looked at as being guilty when it was the company's fault that our numbers were off. This went on for several days. By the end of it all, I was drained. I'd spent a lot of time in real fear that I was going to lose my job. I was frustrated that my very clear and defining proof wasn't enough to satisfy upper management. I was angry because rather than looking at my entire history with the company as well as my entire career, I was immediately assumed guilty. I was upset because I felt set up and 100% completely had to defend myself rather than those above me taking a moment to dig into the evidence I was providing. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I mean, every minute of every day through this whole ordeal, I was scared. It affected my sleep. It affected my home life. It affected my ability to work. Don't get me wrong, I still functioned, but I was under some serious stress. Bella kept telling me to let it go. I knew she was right. Heck, I kept telling myself to let it go. And I knew I should, but I couldn't. We can't afford to live on one wage. We live in a small town, so jobs like mine are extremely hard to come by, unless I want to commute for an hour each way, which takes away from the most important thing in my life, which is my family. I'm being treated unfairly. Fear, frustration, anger, one feeling after another after another. Guess what? This is what someone with autism goes through over something as simple as a haircut or a change in plans. As neurotypical people, it takes something as serious as facing losing your job and having your life completely and utterly turned upside down for us to feel what someone on the spectrum feels like when the grocery store is out of cheese puffs. I consider myself to be someone of at least moderate patience, and I pride myself on what I believe is my ability to handle more stress than the average person. Good, I was unable to let this go. Even now, a couple weeks later, I still find myself getting angry over how I was wrong if I allow myself to think about it. That's part of what autism is, Circle. What seems insignificant to you may be their entire world in that moment. Brushing teeth could very well be the equivalent of you getting a root canal. Waiting in line for five minutes could be like the road rage during a three-hour traffic jam. Imagine how overstimulating a haircut actually is. You have a stranger touching your head and face, clippers buzzing right on your head and in your ears. You have to sit still during what to you is a torturous moment. I get why John hates them. Accepting autism means looking at things through their eyes. It means you find a way to step into their world and then help them through whatever it is that they're going through. It's not always easy. Heck, I still get mad at John sometimes when he has a meltdown over something that he already knows has to happen, such as clipping his fingernails. We aren't perfect, and that's okay. But sometimes, just stepping back for a moment and imagining what someone with autism is going through, even if it may seem trivial to you, 
is enough to get you through that moment. So if this makes sense to you, and if you find value in this video, then help others who are going through these same experiences get this message by sharing it on Facebook and subscribing on YouTube. Until next week, Circle, continue to live in faith and not in fear. Bye!